Hey, good morning, guys. It's uh, one day with me, Sergei Stakovsky on the ATP on the helmet. Let's go to breakfast. Hey, it's right here. Oh, we have a better ride then. Can we share elevator with you? Quisiera salir, por favor. Que soy muy fea. So, I always have some ham for breakfast with cheese. Just sort of a sandwich, which is maybe not so healthy, but definitely tasty. Some fresh orange juice. I'm gonna make a deal. I know we go to get some bread. Everybody's everybody's scared of the camera. Ah, this is the this is our Russian speaking community. So guys, that's my breakfast. And I'll see you in a bit after it. Sergei's had a life out on the court for as long as he can remember, and he's more than happy to tell us all. Well, almost all. Myself. I'm a close person. You're not allowed to ask this <laughs> I started when I was six in uh, my grandfather took me to the tennis courts in the Ukrainian Olympic Stadium and I was hitting with another kid, with about 50 kids and we're hitting against the wall and uh, I was uh, in the group of maybe 15 to 20 kids until up to until I was, I don't know, 10, 11. Then it was a smaller group, it was five or six kids and then it, it went on and I really loved what I was doing and uh, I had a couple of fights with my family. They were really pushing me if I wanted to play tennis or go study and I, I was crying and saying that I want to play tennis and I really want to thank them to to believe for you know keeping me there financially supporting me and not only financially and emotionally and uh, giving me the chance to do what I really love. That early support has paid off. Sergei already has four ATP World Tour titles to his name and is sitting comfortably in the world's top 50. You know, um, maybe at some point I was lucky that I was the second kid, not the first. So my father is a professor of urology, so my brother more or less took his steps. So I had a more or less a free free will to do what I would love to and uh, I would say that my brother did suffer a bit from my tennis because I mean 70 or 80 percent of the budget of the family was going to my tennis and uh, so I'm now I'm trying to do everything for the family what I can and he's now in Canada in Toronto he have a year of internship and a year of research in uh, Toronto hospital which is quite good for him and uh, when he gonna come back to Kiev if he gonna come back he's gonna be a bit better than my father which my father definitely doesn't like and I still have a younger brother, which is playing tennis. Eddie, how do you want to practice? Boris is waiting on court. I believe he's already nervous because I'm late. And one minute. Time spent out on the practice courts is worth every minute. It's this consistent hard work which enables Sergei to chase his dreams. I mean, you always enter a tournament with a goal of winning it. So basically you play tennis for achieving goals. Well, my goal for this year was to end up in top 20, and it, it is still the first objective. I believe I'm old enough to be there, and uh, <laughs> I believe I have all the knowledges, I would say, and all the experiences I need to be there. So just about uh, hard work and winning matches. ATP World Tour uncovered, we're behind the scenes at the All England Club as the championships continue at Wimbledon. And what does it take to reach the final of Wimbledon? We get the inside track from last year's runner-up, the Czech Republic's Thomas Burdick. Until then, don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com for your 24-7 breaking news. And talk with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash ATP World Tour and Twitter using at ATP World Tour.